Clements Homebrew. Coming at you with a beer review. That's right. And today we've got one I bought over a year ago. This is probably almost two years old at this point, I think. It's by Schmaltz Brewing. It is the Coney Island Human Blockhead. That's right. This is a Doppelbach, except for they call it what, Christian? They call it an American Imperial Bach. That's right. And this is aged in? Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels. 100% too. 100%. Yeah. So, you know, I've heard mixed things about this one. It's a fun looking bottle like I showed you though. So we're going to get this one cracked open and give it a try. It's an Imperial Doppelbach. So take a look. What kind of colors we got off that? I know the light's not great for you on your side, but it's kind of a brown with reddish kind of hues to yeah. it, I'd say. A dark yeah. mahogany maybe. Yeah, like in yeah. There. Yeah, but I do get some nice red hues on the bottom. We had a head on there. It's fading a little bit, uh, but there's still a little bit on top. Kind of an off, off white there. Nice color. Now this is a kosher company, as as we would know, since they are from New York, Clifton Park, and uh, they do have a new facility. I found out, so Sweet. they might be cool to check out, guys. All right, so we're gonna get a nose on this one. Boozy. Wow. Well, it's not just boozy. I got a ton of caramel, some toffee, and I got dark fruits right off the top. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the really sweet dark fruits. I get some nice candy plum and dark I get dates. To it. Yeah, very you're right. Totally bready. Oh man, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, heavy date sugar aroma. Really big date sugar. But like I say, some candied plums, but I think the date sugar is a stronger, almost almost like a maple syrup component. Oh, but Obviously, it's really we're sweet. getting a different beer than uh, most people have gone since it's been aged. Right, right. I kind of like that, being a big barrel. But yeah, just really big and sweet. You get the booze on there for yeah. sure. You get some vanilla from the oak as well. Um, but I'll tell you what, uh, the aroma is quite inviting. So yeah. I'd say cheers, let's go for this. Well, if we didn't mention it, it's 10%. And you can you can tell it's 10% because it's very boozy. Uh, you definitely get that uh, bourbon in there. It's kind of a, a medium body. Yeah. And it's probably gonna get better and better as we let it warm. We got a nice mid-temperature afternoon, which is great. And, um, but it's got a very like uh, caramel type coating and, and flavor in the mouth. It's very toasty, earthy. Yeah. Um, I think it loses a lot of the the characters that the aroma had in the flavor. I don't think you get as much of the figginess, the maltiness and everything. As I you do on the, the nose? As on the nose, I okay. think the nose invites more than what is given because of the maybe the 100% barrel age <laughs> of the, the bourbon, because it definitely takes over the flavor. Yeah, so there's a little bit of bitterness that picks up on the back side, and um, it's not bad bitterness, but it's strong enough that it kills the tones, kind of kills some of those flavors. So you don't have this nice lingering of sweetness on your mouth the whole time, which is honestly kind of disappointing, because I really like those sweet flavors. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I had re seen reviews of it. It lended earlier towards an IPA. Um, there was a lot of hoppiness. With this age, the hops would have dissipated, which means That's that all you have left is the... Yeah, the bitterness on the, the back side. Exactly. So, but I'll tell you what, though. I think it still has a lot of, like, like I said, a lot of that caramel sweet flavor on it. It does coat the mouth pretty well. Um, I mean, I still do get that date sugar. I still get caramel. Uh, I don't get so much the figs, maybe hints of the figs and the plum. They're not as much there. But that sweet date sugar, that brown brown sugar, maple type mm -hmm. syrup flavors, they're all present. Um, so, and I do like Light Doppelbox. molasses flavor. Yeah, a hint of that. And Like I said, I like Doppelbox. I really do. So as an Imperial Doppelbox, um, uh, of course, I'm going to like that. We've been letting this warm. We've been sipping on it for a while. You know, I, I just, 
I don't care for the bitterness on the back side. I know they're trying to balance it out, but I, I think there's just too much of it personally for this style of beer. Yes, Doppelbox don't have much bitterness. They actually are very sweet to the end, and they leave a lingering taste for you to want more. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of kills it for me a bit. That's unfortunate. I mean, I love the sweet flavors. I love that you get some of those brown sugars and light light hint of uh, molasses and etc. The date, the date sugar. That's really nice. Hints of maple syrup. That's all wonderful. And and uh, but um, anyway, it's an interesting beer. It's it really is. It's it's not perfect, but it was a fun go for sure. I'm I'm kind of enjoying it. So we're gonna go for style now. Technically, there's no such thing. I mean, they're calling it a Doppelbach, but let's face it, at 10%, this is an Imperial Doppelbach. So, as an Imperial Doppelbach, I can't say that I've ever had an Imperial Doppelbach, um, but the, the upfront flavors, I think the front side of this, for me personally, is quite nice. I really like it. It's, it's just, even the middle is very, very good. It's the back where the bitterness hits and stops everything is disappointing. Um, but for me, as an Imperial Doppelbach, and it's kind of unique, I'm kind of digging on it. I'm going to give this an 88 as an Imperial Doppelbach. I mean, as it's warmed up, it's actually gotten a lot better. It's smoothed out. The booziness is kind of tapered off. For me, I'm going to give it an 86. Overall, I'm really kind of enjoying this beer. Uh, I think Christian has swayed me a little, be perfectly honest with the fact that it's they're calling it an American Imperial Doppelbach, and so there's gonna be a little more hoppiness. I wish it was in other ways, but fresh, it probably would have had more hoppiness up front and less bitterness on the back. We're drinking it aged almost two years, which is probably not really what they were thinking of. And yet, though, I'm really loving this with a lot of sweetness on it and the barrel character, etc. Uh, and it does have that bready syrupy kind of flavors that maple syrup and and those things that you would get in a doppel box so it does have those characteristics i can't move this into the excellent category can i push it up a little bit in the overall i'm giving this an 89 i think on my overall i'm really having a fun time with this beer let's face it this is a revolutionary beer when it comes to doppel box here it is baby coney island human blockhead life's too short to drink cheap beer even with airplanes flying around, we'll see you on the next beer review. Cheers, baby. What's effing going on now? Sounds like a cicada. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> that was I interesting. I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> You it's shut your mouth, you cicada! <laughs> what now? This is a jet? jet. Oh. So, I mean, this, this is where I can... Shut the fuck up, boy! God damn it! I'm in the middle of a raid! Fucking you! Plane! <laughs> is that a... Screw my language! Plane! Alright, time for overall. Well, we've been sipping on this 10% beer for a long time and uh, feeling really good. So, probably the scores are going up. <laughs> scores might have gone up for an overall because 10%. You never know. <laughs>